life. And the Bible has made a major impact on my life. Woke up at six o'clock in the morning one time on, on, a, on a Sunday morning, driving on the opposite side of the road. And I put it in my car in park. I said, what are you doing with your life? And I asked the trainer, what happened to her? She said, man, she got into a bad car accident. She's learning how to walk all over again. I said, I hear, here's what I want you to do. Never short stopping, now I'm winning like I'm Jada. Steady through the rigor, yeah, I'm getting bigger. Was fighting in them trenches, now I'm making seven figures like. So as a fellow believer, somebody that's fearing God and wanting to serve God, have you ever felt conflicted about being financial success, rich, seeking prosperity, wealth and happiness? Well, so did I. And this clip here from this podcast I was doing hopefully summarizes why the Seven Figure Squad YouTube channel absolutely exists. It's to help you to get the strategies, the thought process, the mindsets, the attitude, the shift, to help you embrace the God-given dream that God has given you to say, I am sick and tired of being broke. So Ivan back there is on my team. He extracted this clip from this podcast to help you understand the values and principles to launch off into 22 being the beginning of the greatest years of your financial life. So please, let's check this out. Yeah, I, I came to the church really as a broken dude. I was making money. I started my career already in the insurance industry. By the time I was 30, I was already making multiple six figures, uh, about to make my first million dollars of, of cash flow. You know, from a kid who was raised with no large aspirations, making $20,000 a year as a sergeant in the Marines, to start making six figures, you know, it's kind of a big deal in, in one's life. And so, but at the same time too, you know, going through all that, I was still completely broken and uh, empty and spirit inside. I uh, found enjoyment in just going out and having external sources, going to the clubs, partying, drinking the whole, the whole bit. Uh, that was my life. Um, and my father said, what, what are you still going out for? I said, uh, uh, you're, you're a dad, you need to be home. And they're like, yeah, what, whatever, dad, I wanna listen to you. But it wasn't until I woke up at six o'clock in the morning one time on, on, a, on a Sunday morning, driving on the opposite side of the road. <laughs> And a car was headed right towards me. All I saw was big eyeballs through that windshield. I veered left, almost hit the bus stop on the opposite side of the road, veered all the way to the right, and I put it in my car in park. I said, what are you doing with your life? You, know, you, you could have taken yourself out. Worse, you could have taken somebody else out. You know, Worse, you could have been uh, orphaning your kids. And so I, I decided that right then and there I needed to change my life. And the Bible has made a major impact on my life. And, and I, I, I wish I could say uh, from a, a ministerial pastoral standpoint. No, it's been affecting me economically from a financial standpoint, being a provider, uh, being a, a better father, being a better son, being a better leader in, an, in the business community. So I, I just felt that there is this whole conflict with me with being a person who wants to follow God, wants to ch chase after God's heart like David was, but yet still be financially successful and having financial freedom. So I was wrestling with that. And next thing you know, I stumbled across Proverbs and Ecclesiastes. And I'm like, what am I wrestling about? It's right here. God wants us to be wealthy. God wants us to prosper. Uh, these Proverbs won't be in the Bible unless God wants us to follow these things. And I realized there's over 2,300 verses about money in the Bible, but 500 verses about prayer and faith. So it kind of tells you, yeah. people will get faith and prayer, no problem, but it's the handling of money and stewardship of your talents and time, time and resources that a lot of people have a problem with in terms of giving back and honoring God. So in, in that journey, that's how the Bible and, and having faith-based principles kept me grounded without having to veer off on another side of the road if somebody's driving right at me, hurting somebody else. It's geared, my, my life now is geared towards serving and helping other people because I, I want to make a difference in other people's lives. Since, since the difference was made in my life, the whole pay it forward mantra, right? Since the difference was made in my life, and when I'm recruiting and teaching, coaching other people when it comes to money, I see myself back in those broken moments. I see a couple, I see a family, I see a single dad, I see a single mom, I see them in the broken moment, especially during this time of the year, and I know what that's like. And silently, Rob, I don't, I don't go and put, post this on social media, but silently, I, sure. I vastly overtip servers. Uh, you know, when you put there in the check, you're signing off your check, you put a dip, yeah. it, it 10%. Sometimes I, I, don't, I don't even look at it. It's just lunch and I, it's, oh, psh, 100 bucks, $100 tip. They don't even know it. And here, here's why I circle it and say, God loves you. Circle it, God loves you. They don't, they don't need to know, you know, what I do. They don't need to be a client of mine. I just said, man, God loves you. 100 bucks here, 100 bucks there. I just want to silently tip some. There's a lady that was going to our gym and uh, I know she was coming in a walker. I said, dude, dude, she's young. She's walk, coming in a walker, you know, barely walking. And I asked the trainer, what happened to her? She said, man, she got into a bad car accident. She's learning how to walk all over again. Right. I said, I hear, here's what I want you to do. I want you to make sure her membership is now charged to my credit card. 
and I want you to train her twice a week. And when she's coming, she three times out of three times she comes down her own. Two times I want you to personally train her to show her the movements, all these different things. And here's the thing, here's here's my only ask. You don't tell her it's from me. Don't tell her it's from me. But I want you to tell her God loves you. So I want you to do. God loves you. And I think Rob, in my own little way, I think I'm making a difference that way.